we're back. We are going to start this whole process by, again, again, let's draw a map of our entire nervous system. What a great idea. And we'll start with, oh, what is this? Have you ever seen this drawing before? I know you haven't. Let's see. We'll play Pictionary for a little while. Ready? Go ahead. What is it? What kind of information is that? Dogs of a feather. This is somatic sensory information, of course. How did I know that? Because I'm smart, that's how. That's how you knew it, huh? Okay, what's this one? Visceral sensory. How did you know that? Because they're always light blue. Just kidding. Can you tell the difference between them from an anatomical perspective? No, they're, they look exactly the same. Where are these cell bodies? You know the answer to this. All of these cell bodies are found in the posterior, oops, that's not a P. There's the P, posterior root ganglion. So visceral sensory and somatic sensory cell bodies are found in the posterior root ganglion of our spinal cord cross section. We just don't have our parts of the spinal cord drawn in here, but we totally could do that. We could imagine a cross section and throw all those guys in on the same pathway. They could also be on different pathways. They can be at any level of the spinal cord. So this information is going to come in from all over the place. Let's look at our efferent pathways. For clarification or for ease of looking at our diagram, I'm going to draw the motor on the right and the sensory on the left. But the fact is, is the motor on the right? No, of course not. It's on both sides, and the sensory is on both sides. So please do not think that you might get confused about that. Let's draw. I'm going to include some anatomical details in this little diagram that hopefully we will come back to and be accountable for. First of all, do my motor and my sensory always connect? They'll connect if we're dealing with a reflex, but they don't have to connect. And in fact, tell me who I just drew. Can't help it. Have to draw it the same way every single time. Right? Who is this? Of course, this is our friend somatic motor. How did you know? Right here, somatic motor always innervates skeletal muscle. Okay, I think I'm going to run out of room here, but we might have to do a little crisscrossing. I am drawing it anatomically how I want it to be. Who else do we need? Who else do we need to include here? Well, we should probably include some visceral motor. We've got a couple different ways that we can do visceral motor. In fact, let's go ahead and let's make our visceral motor effectors. Visceral motor effectors, who are they? We know that all visceral motor effectors are smooth muscle. That's smooth muscle cardiac muscle or who? Glands. All visceral motor innervates these guys. If a fiber is innervating these guys, it is a visceral motor fiber. So we have a couple flavors of visceral motor. Look, here's one flavor. It looks a little something, something like this. Now, this is an interesting characteristic. Visceral motor fibers have two neurons in a pathway. And look, okay, is this going to hurt your head if I do this? If I go at it like this 
oh, sure, let's go around the corner because we are ultimately heading right to our two-neuron pathway to our effector. That's one flavor of visceral motor. We have another flavor of visceral motor that is important to include, and that's this guy. And I am drawing these how I want them. Now look at this one. This one's kind of funny looking. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Just kidding. It wasn't really funny. Don't worry, guys. We don't think you're funny looking. What do you notice about this one? Whoa. What are all my visceral motor fibers innervating? They're all innervating the same thing, even though I have two different colors with some little funky, fun things going on here. We'll talk about all these little characteristics, including this one that I'm about to draw on here. What? What is this, you might ask? You're asking that, aren't you? You know what this is. What? It looks really cute now. He looks like he has some really cool yellow pants. I want yellow pants like that. Let's give this guy some yellow pants, too. You're not cool unless you have yellow pants that look like this with the puffy legs. It's myelin clowns? Yeah. It's a myelin sheath. Now, what do you notice about both of my flavors of visceral motor pathways? Yes, I am going to draw every single little ruffle of myelin, my myelin ruffles, on my visceral motor. For real? Wow. Whew! That's a myelin sheath. Look, neuron number one has that crazy myelin sheath. Neuron number two doesn't. Neuron number one has it. Neuron number two doesn't. That's kind of an interesting fast fact. What else do you need to know? Maybe we should make a note of the fact that, would you agree that these guys all in here would be a bundle of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system? What's it called? A ganglion. That's interesting. Do you think this is also a ganglion? Yeah, this is also included in a ganglion. You might think, oh, you know, I mean, why not just have a crazy mess of neurons going everywhere? Well, we know that our, other than visceral sensory, but even visceral sensory is going to travel in a nerve out here in the periphery. Like, we could actually find and grab all of these nerves that these fibers are running through. So if we've got all the nerves, which is the bundle of axons, then somewhere on the ends are going to be bundles of cell bodies. So there's going to be ganglia somewhere in the periphery. Look at the difference in my ganglia with my dark green fibers and my light green fibers. These are anatomical characteristics that we are going to look at. Now, here's our overall picture. Now let's look at some specific things that distinguish visceral motor in general from um, somatic motor. 